A rising gun violence in Philadelphia is making an indelible mark on some young people. Tonight, Natasha Brown is taking an in-depth look at children in crisis and how gun violence is impacting their mental health. In a city with near daily gun violence, the sound of police sirens and the roar of emergency vehicles often become a part of life in some high crime areas, leaving the ear piercing noise nearly ignored. For those young people who are becoming more of the victims of gun violence, their trauma seeps through and is ever present. At the height of the pandemic, Philadelphia saw a record homicide rate with more than 500 victims. 38 were teenagers, 13 to 18 years old, the majority of them black. For Charity James, it's personal, having lived with the scars of gun violence for decades. When I was 12 years old, I was shot, and my brother, he was shot. My brother was 23, I was 12, and the person that shot us was my cousin. He was 16 years old. My brother died, and I survived. James recollects that moment as if it were yesterday. At 37, she continues to live with the scars from that day, both physically and mentally. A wound here from when I had a trach, and I have a shot wound here. It just left me with a lot of lasting effects, such as I have severe depression, I have anxiety. Her journey toward healing included talking to therapists. She still does. She's been sharing her story, working with NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, the country's largest grassroots mental health organization, reaching out to young people in Philadelphia directly impacted by gun violence. Our mission is to build better lives for the millions of Americans who are impacted by any sort of mental health condition, whether that's a mental illness or trauma. We do that through support groups. We have a whole variety of support groups advocacy, we provide resources, and then we also provide education programs. Becca Lane works with NAMI and has struggled with her own mental health issues over the years. On this day, we caught up with Becca and Charity at Boys Latin High School in West Philadelphia. It's NAMI ending the silence, so the hope is for students to not feel like they need to keep everything inside anymore and for them to know, like by listening to me do the larger presentation and Charity who shared her story, to listen and relate to it and see also that real people People experience these things. Do you know what it, what it was? The all boys school is still reeling from the loss of one of its students, shot and killed in September after a football scrimmage in the Roxborough area of Philadelphia. At Boys Latin, we've been coming regularly at least four times a year for the last five and a half years. I just feel that it's so important for males to hear this message, um, especially in the black community. They know there's a lot more stigma. According to statistics, symptoms of mental health distress in children appear within days of being exposed to a single shooting. In a study conducted by Penn Medicine in 2021, of the 2,629 shooting incidents, 31 percent had one or more corresponding mental health related emergency department visits in the 60 days following the shooting. The study revealed a significant increase in pediatric mental health related ED visits following incidents of neighborhood gun violence, most pronounced in the two weeks after the shooting, among children residing closest to where the violence occurred and among children exposed to multiple shootings. We are seeing an increase in youth, particularly younger youth, who are impacted by gun violence, for example, as shooting victims themselves. We sat down with Leah Brogan, a psychologist with the Center for Violence at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, and Tammy Benson is chair of the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences. They talk about the clear discrepancy in youngsters chronically exposed to more violence. They witness gunshots and shootings on more occasions than one. Their parents are traumatized, and those youngsters tend to have worse outcomes. Without the proper treatment and intervention. That really becomes the other issue for those who are chronically exposed or those who are predisposed because they may already be struggling with depression or anxiety. Not receiving the kind of interventions that they need has led to pretty poor outcomes, including chronic depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and suicide attempts. If I can't help them here, they're connected to resources so they can get the help that they need. School counselors like Nakia Washington at Boys Latin work closely with organizations like NAMI, providing mental health outlets for students in crisis. Despite extensive data and NAMI's outreach, the organization has its share of limitations. One of our biggest limitations is time, and we need more volunteers to get involved. The link between gun violence exposure and mental health-related illnesses seems undeniable. 
but doctors say there are resources out there to directly put a dent in the growing problem. In Philadelphia, there are community-based mental health organizations and providers who are trained in evidence-based practices to address trauma. The main thing is just being able to talk to someone who can relate to you, someone who has lost someone to murder, to violence. And to hear candidly from youth about their struggles with mental health, please be sure to see a powerful documentary we're bringing to you exclusively. Kids in Crisis will be streaming Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. After that, you can watch it on demand on our website. Look for Kids in Crisis on our home page. And if you or someone you know needs help, please contact the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline by calling 988 or text HOME to 741741.